Today we're going to be working on a 79 year old gentleman with a six centimeter aneurysm. We have a number of choices when it comes to the treatment of abdominal aortic aneurysms. At our facility we have chosen the Alto as the new workhorse platform for aortic aneurysms because of the low profile and the short neck indication as well as the robust data set that shows excellent long-term results over five years with the polymer ceiling ring technology that was adopted from Ovation. We were fortunate enough to be the first in the United States to deploy the Alto during the Elevate study and we are beyond thrilled to be able to do the first Alto in the Western United States. This is a big day for us. My name is Dr. Steve Hanau and we're broadcasting from Albuquerque, New Mexico's Heart Hospital. Um, with me I have Dr. Trent Prophet, Dr. Rick Wilkerson, uh, Dr. Dan Burson. We've also got uh, Natasha, Kalia, uh, Amanda, Fred, and Terry St. Louis here on my side. Today we'll be presenting the first Alto case in the Western United States for a, a treatment of a six centimeter aneurysm of a 79 year old gentleman um, who we've evaluated with CT angiography. Uh, we're gonna start the case off uh, with the conventional aortic angiogram and we can play that back here for you right now. On CT angiography, this patient had a 23 millimeter neck at uh, the inferenal position at uh, seven, which we'll be using to uh, use as the seal zone for the Alto case. You can see the uh, bilateral renals are widely patent. The common iliacs are widely patent, but there's heavy calcifications at the bifurcation, which we wanted to acknowledge for um, the purposes of uh, successful pre-close, which we've already done. There's two per closes at each femoral position. So what I'm, what I'm holding in my hand here is the Ovation IX device. And uh, this has been our workhorse device for the last several years. Uh, and I'd like to highlight what, what, we, what we had used here, uh, starting from the full crown, the mid crown here. You have the uh, ceiling collar and then the ceiling rings here demonstrated. And then you can see the limbs as they're configured as well. And you can see that they're almost a mirror image of each other. And so the difference in this new technology is that you've got a much shorter ceiling collar. You see the ceiling rings here. And then the configuration of the limbs as it's staggered compared to the mirror image here. And again, the purpose of that was to be able to separate which was the ipsy and which was the contra limb. Now you can see here when it's actually filled with polymer much more clearly the differences in the ridges within the ipsilateral and the contralateral limbs here. I wanna take a moment to highlight the differences in the delivery system itself. Compared to the IX, the, one of the biggest differences here is going to be this integrated balloon demonstrated by the white cap. The fill port is the same. The crossover lumen is the same. The nested knobs are the same. And the wire port is the same. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and open up the device. So this is the uh, 29 millimeter main body delivery system for the Alto graft. So the teams unpackaged the Alto device and now in this particular sequence we'll unbelt uh, the device from the package system. So once the device is uh, unfastened, we'll remove the stylet and then remove everything from the balloon and the uh, polymer port direction. Okay. 
So now that we've removed the device from the packaging, we're going to go ahead and start with the prep. The first step of the prep is going to be to flush the sheath. And this is going to be followed by flushing of the wire lumen. So once the sheath and the wire lumen are appropriately flush with saline, the fill tube needs to be checked to make sure that there's no bubbles or any other adulterants in the system. The final step in the preparation of the device is to cap the crossover lumen. So once we have the device prepped, we're going to go ahead and load that into the body over a uh, heavy wire. Right now we have an eight French sheath in the groin and we're going to remove that first. So the device is now loaded on the Meyer wire. This is a 15 French outer diameter device, making it still the smallest diameter device on the market. We're also going to wipe down the hydrophilic coating of the sheath. So the combination of the small diameter as well as the hydrophilicity of the device make it extremely uh, deliverable. So the orientation of the device is probably one of the most critical parts of the deployment of an Alto system. This helps to orient the position of the contralateral gate. Uh, that can be represented as the dot on the left. So what we're looking at here is an orientation that will provide for uh, crossed limb configuration. In our experience, we find that the wire naturally wants to go to the contralateral gate when it's uh, positioned in this way. The exclamation point on the right side of the image demonstrates the ipsilateral position. Okay. So once we've oriented the limbs of the device, now we can go ahead and situate our initial landing zone position. We're gonna advance the device into the body while pinning the wire. Again, maintaining the orientation that we've, we've uh, accepted. It's important to understand that this position of the markers represents uh, the area above the device that is not covered by fabric. So we're going to put those markers at the bottom of the ostium of the lowest renal. So once we're positioned in this way, we'll go ahead and do the sheath retraction step where Dr. Prophet's hand on the left side will meet his right hand. So once Dr. Prophet's got the device positioned where he wants it, we're going to start with the release of the first nested knob. Let's hit Flora. Okay. Once the mid crown is situated and there's a more appropriate adjustment to be pulling the device down, it becomes quite a bit more difficult to try to push the device back up. So it's our experience that you're better off starting the initial deployment just a little bit high and then bringing it back down. Instead of starting too low, it becomes a little bit more treacherous to try to push the device back in. So once we've uh, removed the protective cap for the balloon port, the preparation for the balloon is a four to one mixture of saline to contrast. The volumes of fluid depend on the type of uh, device in terms of its sizing. So the first three sizes, which are 20, 23, and 26 millimeter devices, will use five cc's of uh, the solution for the balloon. 
The other two devices, the 29 and 34 millimeter, will use 10 cc's of the solution mixture. So we're going to want to we're going to want to check the position of the device one more time on fluoro. The purpose of this step is to completely deploy the half crown or the mid crown of the device. So again, this is a 29 millimeter device, so we are going to be using the full 10 cc's of the solution to fully expand the mid crown. Let's go live one more time. Once this is done, then we remove the entirety of the solution from the balloon. Once the mid crown is deployed, we'll take one last look to make sure we're absolutely satisfied with the position of the device and then proceed with removing of the second nested knob to fully deploy the full crown. So this is the second, ne uh, second nested knob. Mm -hmm. Now the proximal fixation is secured. So the next step is the actual customization step where we're going to put in a polymer that has a 14 minute cure time. So Kalia is opening up the auto injector. You may be familiar with the auto injector technology from the original Ovation device, which was uh, delivering a one atmosphere of pressure to the polymer syringe. This has been modified now to deliver 0 0.8 atmospheres into the polymer syringe. Natasha is now going to open up the package that contains the 14 minute polymer. So this is the 14 minute polymer custom fill kit. As you can see here, there are specific instructions on exactly what the precise amount of polymer will be delivered according to said main body device, ranging from 20 to 34 millimeters. 20 millimeters requires a seven millimeter fill and so on, eight, nine, 11 and 13 cc's for the largest 34 millimeter device. Therefore. Today's case, where we're using a 29 millimeter main body, we'll be using 11 cc's of the polymer. So Terry's opened up the stopcocks, and he's going to do a total of 20 uh, pumps on the polymer mixture to activate the solution. So that was a total of 20 pumps that Terry's done to activate the polymer solution. Now we'll deliver the 11 cc's of solution into the appropriate syringe. And we'll attach that to the fill port on the main body delivery system.
lots of plastic. And now we'll take the green knob off and then attach the polymer syringe. The auto injector will follow, delivering 0 0.8 atmospheres of pressure to initiate the infusion of polymer into the main body. We're going to go live and see that happen in real time. So one new configuration of this device has to do with the staggered limb configuration, which is for the sole purposes of ease of identification of which limb is the ipsilateral limb and which is the contralateral limb. So that when wiring out the contralateral limb, there's no question the side of the device that you're entering. At this point, as the polymer is curing, we will remove the pigtail catheter and advance an angled wire to engage the contralateral limb. We will also proceed with pulling back the heavy wire from the device so that we do not bias the positioning of the main sealing ring and allow for a true custom seal during this step. So on this next step, Dr. Wilkerson on the other side of the table is going to be moving a catheter up into position, and then he's going to be doing uh, the fancy footwork of selecting out that wire into the uh, contralateral gate. We prefer a regular angled glide wire for this step, as it provides a little extra touch and feel and doesn't deform the main body delivery system. Once we've selected out the contralateral limb, we're going to confirm positioning within the true lumen with digital subtraction angiography mm -hmm. and contrast. And here you can see contrast filling up the contralateral limb, going into the main body, actually flowing into the left renal and back down into the ipsilateral limb and into the aneurysm. So this next step effectively is going to be allowing us to measure from the device down to where the iliac artery bifurcates. On this step, we're advancing the pigtail catheter so as to determine where the internal iliac artery comes off. So we're going to do a retrograde iliac angiogram on the left side. Go ahead and count it off. This is in agreement with the measurements that we've made on our CAT scan preoperatively, which determined that a 14 by 140 millimeter iliac limb would be appropriate.
So now that the iliac limb has been removed from the packaging, we're going to perform the same sequence as we did with the main body delivery system, where we take the flaps off and remove the device, leaving the stylet behind. So this will be very similar to the main body prep where we're going to flush the sheath and the wire port. So at this time, we've already elapsed 14 minutes of polymer curing time. So we will now remove the auto injector from the device. So the limb is going to be advanced over the Meyer wire into position. You can see the configuration of the markers for the sheath, as well as for the stent itself. The stent markers are going to be placed up to the level of the half ring within the main body delivery system, denoting the contralateral gate. The deployment of the device is essentially a pin and pull mechanism, which Dr. Prophet will demonstrate now. Once the device is successfully um, deployed, the delivery system is going to be removed from the contralateral limb, leaving the sheath behind. So now that 14-minute polymer has been infused and cured, and the contralateral limb has been deployed. The next step is going to be to re-advance the stiff wire back into the system and up to the suprarenal aorta. This will be followed by demating of the main body delivery system from the main body and recapturing of the nose cone, which we'll demonstrate now. This final step will be predicated on removal of the last nested knob to truly disengage the delivery system from the device. And then we'll recapture the nose cone here. So here we demonstrate removal of the main body delivery system, but we have the sheath maintained in position. We're going to need to move the sheath down distally so that we can shoot a retrograde angiogram to identify the precise location of the right internal iliac artery. So we're going to move the sheath back too so we can... Uh, Go ahead and lock the table. So another 14140. So once we are able to identify the precise length, we have decided to use the exact same dimensions as 
the contralateral iliac limb. It'll be a 14 by 140 millimeter iliac limb. So on this step, Dr. Prophet is gonna be removing the main body sheath in exchange for the ipsilateral iliac limb. to it. This is again a pin and pull deployment mechanism for the iliac limb. It should also be noted that the iliac limbs themselves are the same IX device configuration that we've been used to. The iliac limb delivery system is then removed. Once this sequence is completed, we can summarize the case up to now with delivery of the main body system, delivery of the 14 minute polymer within the main body system, deployment of the contralateral limb, deployment of the ipsilateral limb, and now we will assess the seal zone and flow through the device. Keep holding. Okay. So on the completion angiogram that we're looking at right now, you can see from the top to bottom, the pigtail is showing wide patency of the bilateral renal arteries. You can also see here the position of the markers remains exactly the same as where we had initially deployed it. So there's been virtually no movement, movement from the moment that we deployed the crown. You can see widely patent filling of both the ipsilateral and contralateral limb. And then you see flow into the native internal and external iliac artery systems bilaterally. Now, as you see the delays here and you see uh, the lumbars filling retrograde, you can see flowing back into the sac, which represents a type two endoleak, which in our practice, we will continue to observe and do no further therapy at this time. 